The fact that you put such private information online for everyone to see that was so confidential. I have told five people. Five! And you told all of the internet because you're assaulting- Like, please leave me alone like I've asked. I asked you to stop using my name and my information in your videos. And you told me that you would. You asked me to stop contacting you. And again, today, you posted a video with a screenshot of our emo conversation with my name in it. Obviously. Do you think that you're right and justified in all of the things that you're doing? Hi. Get the camera off of me, I swear to God. He has a camera on me! He has a camera on me right now! Get the camera off of me! Why do you have a camera on me? I hope you're happy. You completely, st like, destroyed all of my pride. You told me to get a tattoo saying I'm a liar. Like a tramp stamp. You told me to shave my head. You told me to dye my hair green, shave off my eyebrows, and get an ugly tan. Like, is that not abusive to you? Do you think that's a fair trade for me telling you that I- Like, that's what you think is okay? I betrayed your trust? I want to be able to talk. I want people to realize that he's been telling people lies. But it is scary. When I have asked you, and I told you that you are making me feel uncomfortable and safe, and I've asked you to stop and leave me alone, and you continue to use my name and my information in your videos, this is my final cease and desist. Do not continue to use my name or my information. Please stop posting about me on your Twitter, on your Instagram, on your YouTube, whatever. You can, like, just leave me alone. If you do it again, you will not hear anything from me. I will be... Contacting the police. We broke up. Look at me. We broke up. Look at me. We I don't give up. a whether we broke up or not. I do not give a what you have done to me is irreversible. You've destroyed any way for me to support myself. I have nothing. You've destroyed me. No! Like, that's not how this should work. Like, you don't feel bad at all. That's the worst part. Like, you're just a person who likes to destroy people's lives because they're salty. That's it. You're the worst human being I have ever experienced. Like, I've never met someone so and so up and so willing to just destroy people's lives just because they're insecure about something. I just can't get over the fact that you're that person. Like, that's how low you had to stoop just to try to prove that you're right. Welcome to the X-Files. Unlike my previous videos on Onision, this is a very, very serious video. This is not made with the intention of, here's the tea, grab some popcorn. This video is serious in nature due to the fact that it covers a lot of serious topics, which is all documented and supported by evidence. This video is going to be split into four to five different sections, which are all linked down below in the description. You can click those little timestamps and it should take you anywhere in this video. I recommend you watch this video all the way through. And please press that little arrow down below, expand the description box because there's going to be a lot of information, a lot of screenshots, a lot of archive stuff that is no longer on the internet due to Onision trying to remove it, hide it, or run away from it. That being said, let's jump right into the first part of this video, which is his cult. Yes, believe it or not, Onision had a website form and a cult website in which he describes it as a religion, his own religion that he created. A lot of the stuff on this website and the forms that he says correlates to most recent statements he said in the last year or two, despite this being almost 15 years ago. In the early 2000s, web forms were a pretty big thing. And back in 2004, 5, and 6, Onision's website had become quite popular. His cult website was known as Siska. When reason ends, so does life. Now, as you can see here, he has these answers. He has these little tabs, the meaning of life, human origin, our purpose outside the world's human potential, the afterlife, behaviors, health, feedback, community contributors. Ultimately, this tab of the meaning of life is very bizarre, but there's other tabs that you expand and begin to explore and you realize that this is not a sane individual. This is not just some normal little cult. This is somebody who has a flawed way of thinking about not only humanity, but also how he looks at abuse. He starts his website, Cisco, with an introduction. My name is Gregory J. Daniel. I'm a man of dignity, integrity, and today I look at our society in recognition of what mockery we have become due to a lack of enforcement of 
are crimes that occur every moment of every day. I'm here to tell you that not all men are bad people. However, it is best to see all individuals as potential hostiles and potential victims. We all have the power to do terrible, terrible things, yet it is a choice in the end of the day that divides the pure-hearted from the others. Let the pure of heart be you, male or female. You have the ability to fight negativity in the world, and in this moment, you will. If you have been violated in the past, let the possibilities for more single-sided attacks end now. If you fear future violation, learn from this site. Know you are strong and get through any terrible event. With your strength of heart, mind, body, you are a ours nightmare. Make it so. Not too long ago, I was appalled by suggestions that women dress themselves up as they were homeless or mentally handicapped just to avoid attack. This is a terrible advice, as hostiles do not always choose based on attraction. They do it on who looks most vulnerable or the weakest. Today you will learn how to defend yourself when you are through, and you will find true freedom, what true freedom is. Dress how you like, live how you like, be prepared for the worst, and... If you are, no attacker will ever be able to walk away without themselves being a victim. The day you give up is the day that they win. We will not let anyone take advantage again. We are too strong for that together. This world is truly wonderful as the light always sends away darkness. You are the light. This is a really strange introduction to a website, don't you agree? Hello there, let's just right off the bat talk about R-A-P-E. Well, there's actually a reason for why he talks about this. And he actually gives an entire guide on how to properly, like, not get R-A-P-E. It's really weird. I'm not even going to go through the whole thing. It's just very bizarre. It's linked down below in the description if you want to read it. But there's another part of his website that, again, talks about R-A-P-E. He asks the question, who is capable of committing R? And he says, Sadly, in the past few years, we have seen hundreds of cases where the closest friend, relative, or even member of a holy congregation is a R. It is a sorry thing to say, but truly, anyone you know could be a potential R. We as humans have an amazing ability to hide our innermost secrets and issues. Well, you got that right, Greg. Because you've done one good job, or poor job, of that over the last 12 years. Knowing this, one must be aware of all possible are situations. It can happen most anywhere with anyone. Understanding this will not ruin your life, but realizing that there's a possibility will keep yourself more alert. If you are to learn of R, and you will have information of the R, you must report it to the rep police immediately for the sake of society. Whether it be your brother, your father, your best friend, or otherwise, you have a given duty to report them, and as not by doing so, you are also condoning such acts in that you are just as unforgivable as they are. Now I have to focus on this point because it's all going to correlate to the very end of the video. You notice here that if someone has been abused or are that uh, he says that unless you report that abuse immediately, the second it happens, you are just as bad as a R. Now, these are his thoughts back in 2004, 2005. But only less than a year and a half ago, he made a YouTube video, again, reaffirming this. He made tweets, again, reaffirming this. Let's say I'm a cop and you were R. I can only do my job if you tell me what happened. You refused. You are now a R shield. What I've learned today, R's get away with their crimes in part due to people who are too cowardly to report them to the police. Your husband responds, guess I'm to blame. Your response, I blame everyone who's ever been violated, not just on the violators, but those who keep their crimes a secret. You earned that. Did you guys not think this through? Because you're, what you're doing is you're saying, I didn't do anything about this crime. I did absolutely nothing. Somebody did something to me, and I let him get away with it. You know, if, if a store advertised on the outside, we don't report that to police. You know what's going to happen? That store's going to get gutted of all of its inventory. And I know a lot of you guys want to disagree with me on everything, but... <laughs> come on. Don't be going on Twitter, sharing your story about why you decided to let someone get away with a horrible crime that they committed against you. Because guess what's going to happen? Every guy who follows you on Twitter that knows you personally, every predator out there who comes across your status, they're going to know that you're an easy target. They're going to know that if they do something to you, they're going to get away with it. If you want to get a hashtag trending that actually helps people, do hashtag why I reported. Hashtag how I found justice. Hashtag how to find justice. Hashtag anything productive other than saying the system doesn't work and so I didn't even bother with it and that's why I'm now going to get violated many times in my future and never report any of them. And that anyone, no matter who they are, men or women, if somebody is abused and they don't go to the police instantly, that makes them as bad as the abuser. Now, I don't understand this skewed line of thinking, but telling anybody who, who has been abused in any way 
that they're as bad as an abuser simply because they didn't report it instantly is some of the most grotesque, vile way of thinking about abuse that I've ever heard. And quite frankly, it completely destroys any victim of abuse and ignores any sort of trauma that somebody who has been abused may go through. Because whether you know it or not, every single individual person watching this video, if you've been hurt or abused in any way, people deal with trauma differently from every single person. You don't get to dictate how people respond to abuse, Greg. And it blows my mind that 12 years ago, 12, 12, 13 years ago, you were saying the same things that you said less than a year and a half ago in video format and about your husband slash wife, mind you. You even went on a rant about how your husband slash wife is just as bad as the abuser because she didn't go to the police right away. Who does that to somebody that they're married to, much less makes them feel that bad about their own abuse? Well, an abuser. No harm will come to you out of reporting them. Your information does not need to be given in order for the person in question to see jail time. Be strong and help prevent the next R from ever happening, as R's are often known to act out their aggression again and again and again until they are stopped. Take a stand. You are not alone. R is avoidable. And it's time we learn how to stay away from such horrific situations. He makes another column on his website on how do I avoid R. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing. You can take a look at it here. It's also, again, linked down below in the descriptions. But it's very, 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 very weird. He says at the very bottom that R is preventable, and that the main reason men are women are R is about their attitude and making right decisions. That somehow R can always be stopped in its tracks if you follow his rule book. Again, here is just a screenshot. You can take a look at this of his actual guide on how to deal with somebody when you are actually being R. So to make matters creepier, in his rule book of how not to get R'd, I want you to take a look at opportunity 5 and 6. I personally have always planned out what I would do in a victimizing situation. It may be disgusting, but the R no doubt will discontinue if you puke on him or have a bowel movement and rub it in his face or wee-wee on him. It is easy to forget how to defend yourself in a scary situation, but it's never easy to forget to crap your pants. Do it immediately. It may be your only friend in that situation. Can you imagine that? You're about to be hurt violently, and his advice is to defecate yourself and smear it on the person's face. You cannot be making this up. He wrote this. This is real. This is his rule book. Number six is even a bit more creepier and bizarre and, in fact, would probably get you hurt more. You can easily act like you're possessed by a demon or mentally handicapped in an R situation. Both tactics will surely turn an R off. It is not scare, not to scare him entirely. Make sure you scream, grunt, groan, and say things that he as a boy had nightmares about. It is important that you make him believe that you are insane and will ruin his life. Remember, ours are not necessarily men who do not believe in God. In fact, a good percentage of them are agnostic and believe God believers. Promoting Satan and condemning him to hell may scare him more than anything else. Ours have weak minds. Make sure you use that to your advantage. What's highly disturbing about this opportunity here is that uh, a lot of people who actually are handicapped uh, or are in you know, handicapped situations uh, in, in rest homes or in, in places where they need help um, or they need people to help them or family members or whatever, a lot of people who are mentally handicapped or are handicapped, actually there's a higher percentage of people who are assaulted due to them being handicapped because they're easier prey to take advantage of. So this idea that act handicapped, it's going to somehow save your life, is absolute bogus and disgusting and, and just horrible. But I like at the very end, you mentioned that ours have weak minds. Make sure you use that to your advantage. And well, that's what I'm doing here. I'm responding to somebody who has a weak mind. And with over four to five X testimonies that have all come forward now, showing screenshots and conversations that you are not only an abuser, you're manipulative, but that you do everything in your power to invalidate that abuse. And then you project everything that wrong that you've done on the back at the people who you have hurt. It's a very weird toxic, vile cycle that you're involved in, but we're going to get into that later in the video. Again, I recommend you click that description box. There's more on his Cisco, we Cisco website if you want to dive into it more. I'm only really covering the things that I find to be important and that somehow correlate and link back to the very, very end of this video, because like I said at the start, 
everything stacks, okay? You're gonna see behaviors that are still exhibited 10, 10, 10 12 years ago that are still being exhibited now. I'm all for people changing and people growing and people saying and people doing things in the past that they no longer feel and or would say now, but this is in the case of Gregory's instance, this is not how it works. Ex if behaviors and, and, and things that he said are still being said to this current day, which is that's why this is a problem. This is not cancel culture, this is not a canceling type video. This video is simply diving into behaviors and tactics that he's been using for decades and is still ongoing to this very moment as of today. Now on his cult site, Siska, he admits that his Siska cult site is a religion that he created. And he would also post very weird, bizarre, kind of like blog posts, right? Now all these blog posts that of what I was able to obtain are all linked down below in the description. They're very strange, a lot of them don't even make any sense of what he's talking about. But one specific blog post that he makes is kind of relevant on how Greg sees himself. In one specific blog, he is titled, Email, Hello, Margaret. He describes, I am often dot 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 a sociopath. I find that you describe yourself somewhat in the same way too. If I am being damaged emotionally to an extreme extent, like if someone was breaking up with me or cheated on me to somebody who I just told should no longer exist, all coming from those I care about, my emotions would shut down and I will begin saying that things that I mean, but in a stronger sense, a more blunt sense. All the above examples really happened. I told my first love that she no longer deserved my time. I ended our conversation until I healed. Once to her somehow de-use for second of her cheating or something. There was no third and blah, blah, blah. My lastly, my ex-girlfriend sister of which I began to love like family told me she wished I would pass. She wished Wished I did not exist. I smiled and said she was a horrible for saying those things. I said she was ugly on the inside and she did not deserve to look at me. I made her cry many, many times due to what she said to me in a way that makes me look like a monster. In a way, anyway, this makes me a god. Key point in this post, he speaks about himself as being a god because he was able to hurt somebody because they said something mean to him and he retaliated. Perhaps this was meant figuratively, metaphorically, I don't know. Then he says, I invented a religion. One, I believe anyone who wants peace towards not on earth and less discrimination in our lives would follow. It follows the philosophy that we will come from the earth, it is our true mother, and that any hand which hurts, disrespects, it should fall back to it so they may be used to feed the loaves less destructive, such as the soil. You should see it too, Siska. Most people call me crazy for making it up, so I ask them how the religion came about. It always starts by men like me. Only I am honest. I was not using any sort of things when I wrote what I did. I was not in the desert hallucinating when I wrote what I did. I did not base my entire faith of my eyes in a way what I believe is barely faith is more a fact. So many people base their purpose on higher powers, something they have no proof of existing. I nearly bled to death in a church of God. No one was there to rescue me but my mother. Where is any valid enough proof to dedicate your entire life to rededicate my life to such a manner that is one of few true sins? I am bored of men believing strength of body equates to universal dominance. I am bored of women saying girl power, which only turns into girl disgrace when they put their might up to a man's. Most have weaknesses of the mind which lead to the inedible failure of the body of spirit. I could never love a woman so small in heart, nor will I ever adore a man who feels women should tremble at his feet. I mentioned before how people call me a liar. I assure you, those who have who name such names, they look into a mental reflection when they state such claims, for I lie upon nothing but the floor, and that day is the day that I pass. I think most people can agree that this is very bizarre text. This is a very bizarre blog post, but it does not stop there, and it only escalates now to the official web form in which he was an administrator of. Now, over the last 12 years, Onision has owned and ran many forms of his own, but this one especially has been, well, nuked, and for quite good reason, because Onision has had a lot of controversy in regards to the issues of race. More specifically, he made an entire video about a woman on YouTube on how she should properly treat her hair and how he knows how to treat black women's hair better than women. It was a very strange video, but if you go looking in his past video responses and the things that he has said about people of different ethnicities, going all the way back to 2004, 2005, he said something that really is concerning, which falls in line into future behavior that he just exhibited literally less than a year, two years ago. He writes a forum thread titled, Are you a culturalist? In which he says, this is a controversial question, but if you're a culturalist, I want you to fess up. It's nice to know where people are coming from, especially if it is in the left field. 
Please fill out all these fields as I do by ranking 10 on how much you like them as a group, not as independents based off a guy you know, etc. If I miss a group of people, feel free to suggest or add silently. Americans, six. Iraqs, three. British, five. French, two. Africans, five. Australians, seven. Canadians, six. Eskimos, eight. Mexicans, four. Puerto Ricans, four. Jews, eight. Germans, five. Russians, six. Chinese, six. Japanese, eight. Korean, five. Americanized. African Americans, key point, one. Asian Americans, seven. European Americans, six. Mexican Americans, five. German Americans, four. Jewish Americans, eight. Native Americans, eight. And then mentions briefly on how he really has a lot of disdain for the French for whatever reason. And people follow suit with rating all of these different groups on a scale of one to ten. But there's one form user who responds and asks Greg, a pretty serious, legitimate question. Goat asks, what's so great about Canadians? They're not blindly patriotic, but what's so bad about black people, Onision? He replies, what are you speaking of now? Where does it say I'm racist? I just do not like African Americans. The only thing I have against those born in Africa is the ignorance that they have of disease, their lack of the occasion in advance with the rest of the world still having huts, still living in huts, and the fact that their belief system is amazingly insane. If you want to stick around, I suggest you stop picking on board members, quote. I am a board member. He replies, I'm not picking on you, but the fact that you generalize all African Americans really bothers me. He replies, Goat, I'm very dis glad you decided to violate the rules and are now banned because I believe that you are a star example of someone who speaks before they think. Wow, that could not be an ironic statement coming from you, Greg. I hate to say it again, but there it is. The rules were to generalize, and now you are bothered by me directly rather than the rules of the topic due to your lack of recognition of the facts. FACTS! Flowing the facts. I have all the facts, and you guys don't really have much of anything. Hey, I'm Anision, fact machine as known by some. Honest Greg, or some call me the fact machine. I have a much greater ally than you, which is facts. Those who do not deserve to speak lose their rights. Once you are prepared to speak with logical and respectable information back to the back to your words, please email me and I will consider unbanning you. I'm not sure condemning an entire continent, much less insulting that some people still live in huts in very poor regions around the world, and the fact that somehow all African Americans are riddled with diseases, makes your case look really good about you not being potentially racist. I mean, this behavior here, the things that you say here, links back to your most recent video where you telling someone with very fizzy, you know, black hairstyle on how to properly treat her hair and that somehow you know better than people who have that particular type of hairstyle. Hey, I'm going to be following a new black hair care routine created by Onision. He is shocked that nobody taught black people how to care for their hair. If you guys, for some reason, don't know your hair as well as I do, you can't competently take care of your own hair. Why is it I have to help you smell good because nobody educated you on this? I thought that I made like a hundred videos on it, but I mean, if that's what he says, then like, <laughs> nobody knows how to take care of their hair. Everybody's still coming out with this frizzy crap as Onion calls it. So this frizzy oh, crap, I say frizzy crap because it just comes to mind. Or this braids situation that Onion doesn't like. Highly braided, whatever. First of all, Pretty sure she doesn't spend seven hours a day braiding that. Pretty sure she doesn't even necessarily wash that. And I know that I'm not attracted to that. Here we have another example of that probably doesn't feel good to the touch. It probably isn't fun to maintain. It probably hurts your scalp. Probably isn't washed very much. Just don't. Thank the skies for delivering onion to us. He gave a lot of tips and a lot of tricks. He even suggested some products for us and how to use them and when to use them. This is like the holy grail routine for curly hair care. More attracted to something like this. Something that you feel more inclined to believe that she prepped that today so that doesn't smell like dead rats Unlike probably haven't washed my hair in four years girl over here. He hates frizz If my hair looked like that when I grew it out, I would I would have to figure something out like this you Really want to use some styling products You want to make sure your hair is nice and defined and also he needs to be able to look at it and feel like he can run his hands through it Because I'm using the right products my hair is fantastic. It's super lovely to touch 
People always compliment me on my hair when they put their fingers through it. So it has to be all of these things. So you're gonna have to style your hair and you're gonna have to dry your hair as well before you leave the house. I mean, I would love to air dry it, but then obviously Onisim would not be able to touch it while it's air drying and it would be wet and he wouldn't like that. Very, very weird indeed. So we've established two things. One, Onision did in fact create his own religion. And two, thinks that he is somehow this godly prophet who knows how to properly deal with anybody who is abused, but how to avoid ever being abused in the first place, no matter what. Remember, being R-A-P-E is always avoidable, always avoidable in every circumstance. Just follow his little rule book and you know what, you're gonna be fine for the rest of your life and you're never gonna endure any trauma. Segment 2. Onision marries a woman by the name of Sky. And back in early 2010, 2011, Onision's channel was riddled with YouTube videos talking about his ex-wife. Now I know it's cliche to say this, but again, there are always two sides to every single story told. This is my formal public request for my ex-wife to let me move on, to let me be happy, and to go her own way. I've been paying her a thousand dollars, and as of late, more than a thousand dollars every single month for over a year now, since February of last year. And she just keeps taking and taking and taking and taking, despite the fact that business as of late hasn't been very good. So it's like no matter how much I suffer, she always gets the same. And it's like the relationship has been over for so long. Why, why, why is she still taking from me? It doesn't make sense. Imagine you guys are with someone and they just keep pulling and pulling and pulling and sucking and sucking and sucking all your energy away from you because of this financial debt. This debt that is completely superficial because the basis of it is so unfair. The agreement was originally signed out of fear that I would lose more. More, which I do not have. Well, if I kill myself, at least I don't have to pay my ex-wife anymore. The problem with Gregory, and this is an ongoing trend with every single ex or ex-girlfriend or relationship he's ever had that's failed, is that typically when that relationship ends, he makes a large series of videos talking about that relationship, talking about that ex, and essentially putting them on public blast, despite them never ever saying anything publicly, but most of all, using his audience as a means to shut down anything those exes have to say. In fact, he's been so effective of this until the last month that I knew and never interacted with Sky up until literally September of 2019. I knew she existed, but at no point have I ever heard from her, I've never spoken to her, I've never heard what she had to say. And that's because in 2010-2011, Onision made a plethora of videos talking about his ex-wife. Now in these videos, as you're going to hear, bad-mouthing her, making things up that are not true about her, but he goes on Facebook and rants about her, he goes on Twitter and rants about her, and he goes on video after video after video after video, all about his ex-wife. Now, not knowing anything about Onision back in the 2010, 11, 12, it's easy for people to just watch these videos and say, wow, you know what? That person's a really crappy individual. But the reality is, is that Onision scared her off the internet. He had a large fan base. And when you have a large fan base and you're making videos about your ex-wife or your ex-girlfriend constantly, every single thing that goes wrong and you're blasting out publicly on the internet, somebody with no following at all, how are they gonna feel? They're gonna feel silent. She definitely went to focus on her life and that is a good thing. Because quite frankly, if I was married to Onision, I would wanna focus on my own life and disengage from him completely. But it wasn't until September of this year where Sarah finally came forward, which we're gonna get into that later, and Sky, who's been keeping up with small details of the whole situation of all these exes and all these victims of Onision, finally decided it was time for her to speak up. Onision was no contact for years going about my life in the real world. People in my life kept tabs on me on and off and I was recently informed of the current situation. I am absolutely disgusted and I don't want any more people harmed by this abusive predator. I hope you brought your receipts because it's about to be an early tax season and we all know how where well you fare with the IRS. Do you remember when you wanted me to stay at the house while you moved your new girlfriend in because quote, if I really cared I would continue to support you? Looks like you were trying to recreate your own screwed up version. Parham, even then. Speaking of which, my sister has been playing a long game of spec ops and never wanted your 1 slash 12 
into a ruler baby carrot. I reached out to Sky personally. When he initially came to me with the divorce papers, it came out of absolutely nowhere. He had been talking to Shiloh off and on, and she would sometimes be on his Skype in the background. I thought he was mentoring a kid slash giving them advice on videos or editing like he's done before, but it wasn't troubling at first, but then he became obsessive. It would, he would be on Skype with her eight plus hours. I started asking questions, and he started dodging and being very submissive. I glanced over at his screen at the time. We were both worked at a dual desk set up in our office and saw some pretty sketchy messages being sent, something along the lines of, quote, you're the only one who understands me. The next day, he started locking himself in his office saying he was working on a big project. He was in there pretty much for three days straight, kept being dismissive, wouldn't let me use our only phone, and when Seer got sick, I drove him to the hospital. He didn't even care for his friend who caught the flu, just kept laughing and giggling in his office constantly. After this, he took me aside one night and told me the following, quote, I'm going to divorce you because I finally found real happiness. I have never loved you and I was just afraid of being alone. If you want me to be happy, you'll let me do what I want. Upon which I clearly remember the look on his face, cold as a lizard on ice, dead eyed and with his smirk, he picks up his phone and calls Shiloh and says, it's done now, we can now be together. He turns and walks away, locking himself back in his room. The very next day, he came to me in the afternoon having printed out a divorce document demanding that I sign it. He would proceed to follow me around the house at the time screaming at me that if I really loved him, I would sign the paperwork. Eventually, after the endless onslaught, I give in as my spirit was very broken. He re still refused to let me use our phone. As this was around the holidays, I began prepping to see my family for Christmas in a daze of confusion. I was so despondent. I drove to my mom's house, and as soon as I stepped through the threshold, I broke down sobbing. I told them everything that had happened after I collapsed on the floor, my sister catching me crying with me. She reveals to me that she was watching over me the whole time because she suspected he was up to something. My family had me call a crisis line. They found me a counselor, my sister, and I go back to the house to grab my two cats and a few items. He walks out and merely asks if I'm going to go to his family party. My sister says, of course she isn't. He responds, well, that is going to look awkward for me. He continues getting dressed, humming to himself. Sear is disturbed and tells me if he's so sorry this is all happening. And as you know, the rest, he goes to Pennsylvania to visit Shiloh and such. I am with my family and I get a lawyer. My sister calls him and we find out he isn't home. He leaves a set of house keys behind us and tells us where we put them. We go in and move out. He then accuses my family of breaking in and stealing. Post footage online from security cameras and fans begin to attack me. I go no contact and Sky actually got a no contact order from Gregory just to affirm that this is legitimate. I go through my lawyers and keep seeing my counselor. I get a job to pay the lawyers and borrow some money from my family to retain them. As the proceedings go along, the court determines that the initial contract he made me sign was null because of the above. Proven through my counselor verifying my mental state and the fact that it wasn't notarized properly. Long story above explains how and why this contract was thrown out. Now I realize this is a lot of information, but number one, we're going to take a look at the bogus contract that Onision brought to Sky out of the clear blue demanding a divorce. Because believe it or not, what she says actually holds up because he tried to use this as paperwork in court legally. He wrote out his own divorce separation, divorce document, but you can't do that. You have to have it done legally with divorce lawyers. Separation agreement dot text. I, Gregory, promise I will take care of Sky, housing, food, water, electricity, so as long as no significant abuse of these resources occur and Sky does not have any legal way to violate anyone else in the household. From December 22nd, 2010 to December 22nd, 2011. If Sky chooses not to live in the same house as Gregory, he will provide a $1,000 allotment unless this allotment exceeds 30% of his income, in which case he will only provide 30%. This will also expire. December 22nd, 2000, regardless of when the living quarters change occurred, line C to be clear, allotment will never exceed 30% of Gregory's income. If after December 22nd, 2011, Sky is not ready to move out, Gregory will offer another 12 months of free housing, food, water, electricity, as long as blah, 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 blah. Sky forfeits all home ownership rights to Gregory Daniel effective immediately, and the date is written down. No, folks, I'm not joking. This is Onision's handmade divorce document that he forced Sky under duress. Well, she signed it, but it didn't hold up in court. Because again, you have to go through the legal system of getting a divorce through the state. You just can't write a little contract. And notice how he put an expirations date on this bogus contract. He wanted to give however much money he deems appropriate. Months later, after his affair fails and then his relationship with AJ blows up, he begins love bombing phase, as I've already posted screens of. He is unaware that I communicated with AJ. I tell him I want to finalize the divorce in a phone call. He says that he can't pay the original amount requested, so we negotiated guidance from lawyers. The agreement's met. We sign papers. He asks me if I ever, we ever get back together. He mentions loneliness. I say at best that we were staying neutral and I don't trust him much. He says okay. He gets back with Shiloh very much soon after. He remains neutral and cooperates for a few months. Last time he breaks up with Shiloh happens. 
having no one to release his narc rage on, he decides that I'm the source of his problems. All those obsessive videos ensues with the alimony, death threats, amp up, and other shenanigans. I get offline again for the sheer amount of craziness, crazy stalkers, doctors, and harassment. My accounts go private for my family, and I give up on my channel because I honestly couldn't take how bad it got. He harassed, he harassed me offline on and off beyond this. So when Sky goes to her lawyers and actually gets it done legally the proper way you get a divorce, and everything gets finalized, he goes on a tangent spree. April 25th, 2012, he says, I'm going to end myself to Sky. The only way I will be free from this debt that I have control over is ending myself. So unless I hear from you, unless you notify me that I no longer have to make payments, I'll take the only way out I know. I can't take this torture anymore. It's your choice, as relieving me from this debt is a determining factor. The very next day, he sends another email to Sky. Considering you've completely ignored my pleas for help and mercy, I assume I must continue to be this slave to you, working for nothing, all because you lied, stole, and cheated the system. I've lost all respect for you, Sky. You clearly don't cannot love me. You used me as an easy ride, just like when you cried when I requested a prenup. You set me up. Don't you dare say you love anyone ever again, because love never means stealing or corrupting to sign agreements only to replace it with ridiculous demands. I don't understand how you can live with yourself. I would be ashamed to be you. But unlike you, I honor agreements to the very best of my ability, and thus I'm willing to contribute. I have a legal right to stop you if you do not provide me with the necessary information to deliver payment as a simple, direct method. By the reason I know the way you won't talk to me is because you have no defense of your actions, and talking to me directly would mean facing what shameful person you've become. Now, combined with these emails that he sent threatened to end his life because... He has to pay her a certain amount of money. He makes a video on his channel titled Alimony vs. Slavery. Now you're gonna hear some snippets of audio here. I can't actually so show the physical video because Greg is going to try to take this video down with a false copyright strike. So this is Onision talking about having to pay alimony to Sky. This is followed up with a secondary video titled Please Move On. These videos are linked down below in the description if you would like to see them and watch them in full. However, for the sake of this video, and to make things shorter, these are really the only relevant parts you need to hear. Hey, do you support slavery? Like, do you support another person working for something that they cannot profit from whatsoever? Do you support that? Okay, if your answer is no, then you don't support alimony. Do you realize that? You do not support alimony if you do not believe in someone working for something that they are going to gain absolutely nothing from. Because to me, what alimony is, is it's paying for someone else's lifestyle. Why do we pander to lazy people? Why do we let lazy people suck us dry of our life force? It doesn't make sense. Absolutely shameful, lacking any form of honor these people who collect alimony after even a year of already doing so. A year is plenty of time to get back on your feet, and yet these people, they continue to suck and suck and suck. All the while claiming not to be a succubus, which kind of defines them entirely when they decide to sign a piece of paper that says this person has to pay me for good reason for the next few years because I'm too lazy. Not only is it really crazy to, you know, compare paying alimony, divorce, fees for a couple of years to that of the physical act of slavery. But then he goes on Facebook and makes, again, more posts about having to pay a normal fee or normal payment when you go through a divorce legally. I love how she steals from me every month, and yet people praise her on her Facebook page as a hero. What a crazy world we live in. She doesn't have to work for six years, people, just like she barely worked while we were married. I wish I could get paid to do nothing, but I guess I wouldn't respect myself then. Amazing she does. Greg, grow up. She's done nothing to you. Oh, you mean like rob me from the thousands of a month? You mean like that? This goes on and on, and I could just keep showing you screenshots and things that he has said about having to pay alimony. And the funny thing is, and this goes back to some of my more, uh, more recent videos talking about him having to owe the IRS, is that he actually used the IRS, or I mean he actually used alimony having to pay, you know, your ex-wife money for divorce, and he used that as a tax deduction. So remember, in my last video where I talked about taxes and him blaming everything on TurboTax and him taking out wedding... Oh, I got a wedding ring. Um, oh, my, my car is a... He basically, he essentially used every single expense you can possibly imagine in a business and deducted out of for taxes. Which you can't do. You're only allowed to take money out of deductions when it's like involving your business. 
but he did alimony, he did marriage, he did wedding rings, he did every little possible thing that you, toilet paper, whatever thing that you can deduct and try to get away with, that's what he did, which is why he's still in legal trouble with the IRS and having to pay a massive amount of money, and which is why he had to sell a house for roughly half a million dollars, because he owned this gigantic mansion, because he had to sell it, because he was going to go bankrupt, essentially. To me, this is just karma coming and catching back up with you, Gregory. And I know this video is going to really hurt and damage your feelings, but you have done this to yourself. So in the court documents, it goes like this. My husband and I have been married for approximately five years. We started a business together, which is an online business operated out of our home. The business over the years has become increasingly successful. During our marriage, my husband made the determination that he was going to file for divorce. This was not a mutual decision. In fact, we did not have any prior discussions of it. My husband came in with the papers one day and told me to sign them. There was no discussion. It was clear that I had to sign them or else. He made it very clear that I had no choice other than to sign the papers that he presented to me. I'm not very certain of what I signed. I only have a one-page document. He took the rest of the papers I was able to find out by checking online, and he had filed in county for divorce. The one-page document that I do have that he forced me to sign awarded him all of our property. I do not think that is fair. We own real property, a family home in Washington. We have an online business that has been grossing approximately a certain amount of money per month. I anticipate that there will be a significant discovery. I also anticipate that there should be a matter proceed to trial, that there will be a real estate appraisals for other experts to testify with regard to the valuation of the property and the family business. I currently do not have income. I've been forced out of our home and I'm residing with my parents. I am not employed. I do not have an income to engage experts and to pay them to travel to Lincoln County. I do believe that it would be appropriate to have a venue transferred to county where both the petitioner and the respondent reside, where the property is located and where my family business is located at well. Procedural history. My husband, who was very controlling, domineering personality, informed me that I was getting divorced. He informed me that I had to sign a petition for a dissolution of marriage for which he had completed for the county superior court. Petition, he affirmed on the pre penalty of pre-jury that we had no assets, no liabilities, and there would be no spousal maintenance. My husband demanded that I sign the petition. He told me that the petition was just to get the paperwork started and we could agree upon the final distribution of the assets, liabilities, and maintenance. I signed the joinder. Later, when I questioned how I could begin to survive until the papers were in entered in, that he would provide me with money on a temporary basis. He wrote up a separation agreement. Quite frankly, I did not understand it. I still don't. He told me that this would take care of me and that I needed to sign it. The handwriting on the document is this. I deny that we reached an immediate resolution of this matter and it's entirely in fact he told me that this was just a temporary basis and even though I did not understand or agree to it he made me sign it after my husband forced me to sign these documents his behavior towards me worsened he was yelling and screaming at me in the house he became so unbearable two days later on Christmas Eve I went to my mother's residence she was concerned that I was suffering a mental breakdown I stayed with her residence I ended up up I ended up contacting the crisis line and was referred to as a mental health counseling with a counselor. I was not able to get into regular appointments with the counselor for about a week. My counseling costs about $400 a month. I have not been able to afford any counseling for March. I've attached under a sealed source document verification from my counselor of the expenses that my husband claims are not being incurred. The counselor helped me tremendously. I'm very fragile and break into tears somewhat uncontrollably, particularly when having to deal with issues pertaining to my husband. I did make a request for maintenance. My request maintenance is approximately 25% of what my husband claims he spends each month on himself. It is my understanding that my husband is living with his girlfriend in Toronto, Canada. My husband further claims that I should be able to, to work. I'm employed. I work at law. I work approximately 25 hours per week at 8 55 per hour. I would like to address the prior employment. The last time I worked was a couple years ago. I was a caregiver. I was earning approximately $1,400 per month. My employment terminated when I quit. My husband and I moved from the area to the area. I did not invite to return to work for them. I did part-time work with. This was approximately for seven months. It was minimum wage as well. I worked approximately 32 to 40 hours per week depending on their schedule. I also worked my time off evening weekends with our self-employment business. I should point out that I am requesting money for the transportation. We did indeed buy a car, which was in, needed significant repair for $2,300, knowing that was needed. Repairs were poorly approximately to make a decent vehicle. My husband claims to be putting money into account via PayPal. I have not withdrawn the funds. I do not agree to the thousand dollars in the first place and do not want to accept something that I have not agreed to. I do need the funds. I continue to reside with my mom. I continue to need treatment slash counseling. I would like to be able to have my place of my own. I do not want to be in the family home. It brings back too many bad, terrible memories. My counselor has advised me not to watch any of our videos because they simply trigger my emotional response that I'm trying to heal from. My husband now claims significant monthly expenses for the family business, including other business expenses as 1100 a month and business transportation expenses. He also claims that he compensated me at my previous efforts in the business. I would simply direct the court's attention to Schedule C from 2009 business expenses. I'll explain why the expenses have increased so dramatically other than his monthly travel expenses of almost $1,200 per month. Apparently, he is flying into and out of his girlfriend's home in Toronto. It is my understanding that he has not been back to the family home since approximately the end of January. I would expect that if my husband had increased the business expenses, he would have filed some sort of documentation documentation of same with a sealed source filing. He simply has not done so. I had to borrow money from my grandmother in, in order to pay a $2,500 fee deposit to my attorney. For some reason, my husband believes that my request for attorney fees should be denied. I should point out to the court that I find my husband's statements to his income exp expenses misleading. His financial declaration indicates that the following expenses he only had was $12.37 a month 
in discretionary income. He claims to have paid $1,000 for February and March into my account. This would have left him with $74. However, he claimed under oath that he paid his $4,000 from income, which was paid. Needless to say, it does not explain his discrepancy as to where the additional $4,000 came from, etc., etc. I'm doing my best to get well and stand on my own two feet. I have, I have helped my husband through his military career as well as the development of our business. I know that he would not simply just prefer to wash his hands of me, as evidenced by his petition to dissolve filed herein. However, I do want to get well and be productive. Here he's been awarded the house, ownership of channels, and vivid residual income. I am granted alimony similar to in the value to the old family home, basically wanting to take, break away from him and be shared part of the business. Now here you can see it. I'm not going to go into all the specifics here, but you can read this. You have to take into account here is that Sky helped develop this business, this YouTube channel of Greg's. And essentially wanted to divorce her, kick her out, and make his own little legal divorce paperwork and say, hey, you know, I'm only gonna pay you for a year and get involved with somebody who, again, is a minor and screw up the rest of their life too. Now, I realize that this is a lot of information to absorb, but again, these are gonna be linked down below in the description. And Greg, if she really wanted to really come at you for full force, she could have come for the house. She could have asked for way more than she asked for because you've put her through so much mental, emotional turmoil and, and, and pain. You made somebody sign something under duress, which is, again, Another behavior, another trend we're gonna see later on in the rest of this video. We're seeing people to sign things that are untrue in order to keep them to go away, or in order to keep them silent, or in order to keep them in fear. Life hasn't made sense since I left Sky. Divorcing her was one of my biggest mistakes of my life. So many of my viewers knew that I was a mistake when it happened, but I refused to listen. I can only hope she takes me back, the friend who's always been there for me. I let her down in the worst way possible. I'm such an incredibly foolish man. I'm just really confused right now, totally lost. I don't expect you to want me back. Don't make any decisions without talking to me, okay, first. I'm sorry for making things so difficult. Now, before we enter segment three of this video, this is just kind of like off topic, however. It's odd. Three after the divorce and all this stuff goes through, Onision starts emailing Sky's sister for whatever reason, and I don't know why, but uh, I talked to Sky a little bit, and it seems to be that he was trying to collaborate with uh, Sky's sister in order to like get back at Sky. However, Sky's sister completely ignored him, literally offering her thousands of dollars for a v to just be in his YouTube videos. It's, it, it's very strange. As far as income, like I said, I'm pretty sure I can pay you more than what you would make at another job. Let's just have fun and make awesome videos together. I need help, Sky. My financial situation, specifically thanks to taxes, is really messed up right now. I need to work with you through this. Please call me sometime and write back. February 18, 2012, congrats, I'm broke. Please let me move on, please let me be happy, please don't take any more. All will be forgiven, I'm just tired of hurting. I want nothing from you, why do you still take from me? Please, this is absolute torture. Don't let me throw my life away over principle. You're not a horrible person. I've known you long enough to see that, but what you're doing makes everything we've gone through so ugly. And this goes on and on and on and on and on. Like, it's just, it's it's crazy, guys. It's absolute crazy how he goes from one second to like, you're the most horrible person in, in, in the world. The other moment he's like, I, I want you back, I want to be with you, it was a horrible mistake, I made a, a, an error, I blah 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 blah, and he just keeps going, and she just continues to ignore him. I mean, the divorce has already went through, the paperwork's been done, legally there's everything's been done that's supposed to go through the state, and he just continues to harass an email, and no one until this last month knew any of this. And like I said, there's always two sides to every story, making them to run in fear and not have a voice because you have an audience to shut them down to every person you hurt and abuse is not okay. Now before we end this segment, Sky wanted to say a personal message to everybody who was watching this video and this is what she had to say. I've come forward hiding after all these years because I want this type of predatory behavior to be brought to people's awareness. I was harassed and threatened offline due to the lies this man spread about me and my family. I had to get therapy for the emotional abuse I endured during our marriage. Upon finding out what happened to Sarah, I was angered that more young women are being hurt, that her story was being brushed aside while he and his spouse continued their antics. This was a girl who trusted them while living under their care and they violated her in more ways than one. I knew if I stepped forward to show support she stood more of a chance of being believed. I don't want her to go through the same harassment I went through as she clearly had already been through enough. So I've come forward to help establish a history that shows the pattern of a predation, the emotional abuse, the manipulations, gaslighting, and other outright harassment brought to the light so that other young ladies wouldn't have to be preyed upon. I am so glad others have come forward each corro corroborating the last. I am just saddened by how many have suffered. Hopefully those who will see this video will become more aware and help those and themselves to avoid or get out of these circumstances. That being said, we have all been supportive of each other in the proceedings forward. I want all the other girls to know that there's a future after this and that those past moments you've lived don't define you. What you are doing now is so important and don't give up. 
I'm living a much happier life now and I'm free. I've gone back to school, working towards getting my master's, pursuing my dreams, and I'm in a long-term relationship with one of the most kind, funny, loving men in the world. My purpose now and have so much to explore in this life, I'm taking the time to develop my skills and explore spirituality. Regardless for any young woman out there to going through something like this, know that there are kind people out there who will love you and that you are worth so much more. Please speak up. I support you and so many other women will too. Much love and kindness. Segment three. Shiloh. I was 16 when we started just talking over Skype. I had spent hours a day talking to other online friends and honestly thought nothing of it over the seven to nine months we were communicating over Skype. He gave me advice, I opened up to him and things, and he posed as my best friend. We spoke for at least eight to 12 hours sometimes a day. He did not express love or in otherwise interest in me that I was aware of until the day on Skype that he showed me the papers with Sky and said it was because he had fallen in love with me and out of love with Sky. I remember being really shocked because although sometimes he would open up to me that they were growing apart, I always supported working through it with her and always said that I thought they were great a couple together. I've been telling my mom that he was planning to fly me out there to film with him and his wife. I was still 16 at the time. I forgot this until my mom mentioned it, but yes, he was trying to get me down there with him and Sky for a while, but my mom wasn't for it. Looking back on I mean, it, he was 100% creeping me in front of his wife, very endearing, too much so. I was very innocent at the time, and I was just, I was still in that headspace of thinking that nice people were just nice. I'd been raised as Jehovah Witness my entire life before the ages of 13, 14. I didn't continue my career. I was extremely moldable. He didn't send people after me that I know of in the first breakup, other than to drag me with the video of him yelling. The second breakup, however, I got dragged to filth. I woke up the next morning to thousands of emails from his haters. Now, for the rest of this video, you're going to have tweets being scrolled down on the side of other statements of other things that corroborate the fact that Shiloh and Sky have now been speaking with one another and can both come as witness, as evidence that all this was going down at the same time Onision initiated the divorce with Sky. It's a pretty scummy, crappy thing to do. Bring in a whole nother person, screw with them, mess up with their life, but most of all, cause them an extreme amount of trauma, but most of all, stress. Now, I asked Shiloh personally if I could showcase part of this video that's been removed on his YouTube channel, but there's still clips and segments on his actual channel where he does include this, and she asked me if I would not include it in this video, so I'm going to respect her wishes. However, I will talk about something that Onision did at this point. Now, you may have seen this, you may know about this, you may not know about this, but Onision was so abusive and caused Shiloh so much stress that she had a stress-induced seizure. Now, when she had this seizure, instead of doing the normal thing of trying to get help, call 911 or whatever, he decides to pull out his camera and start recording her while she's having a seizure. There is a screen cap here. You can see the video. It has been deleted from his channel. There's also a video on his channel, including snippets and parts of it. Overall, the original video is linked down below in the description if you would like to see it. I'm not gonna showcase it here on my channel, but if you wanna watch it, it's there. It's absolutely appalling. And I remember when this first happened. In fact, there's a YouTube video on my channel. So I just finished watching an extremely difficult video. This video is titled, Shiloh Forgot Me, and Onision, I don't know his real name, I don't know anything about his videos, his channel, but I w looked at the description and it said, this is not a joke. Now, I don't, to me, when I watched, started watching this video, tears actually started coming down my eyes, and when you have people in your family who have you had this happen to, it makes it all the more difficult to watch. The problem, I was highly disturbed by this video, mainly because of the actions that Onishion is taking place. And... <laughs> I, I can't fathom how... It, if this is a legitimate video and he is being truthful, how can he film and record his wife in this mental state and post it to YouTube. I find it disturbing that Onision would even think to exploit someone he loves. Does, is, does he not have any empathy, sensitivity? My emotion right now and my frustration towards this idiotic, pathetic, scumbag, douchebag known as Onision. Oh, no, I can't even say his name now. Onision. Grow up. In fact, I pray, Onision, that you never never have kids. Because if your child ever goes into epileptic, ep I can't even, I can't speak, it's three o'clock in the morning. If your child ever goes into epileptic shock or goes into a seizure, what are you gonna do? Oh, let's exploit him. Let's record him on the video camera. Let's not take him to the hospital. And it was my very first video response to Onision. I had no idea who Onision was. I had never heard of the guy up until this video because the video went 
semi-viral. There's a YouTuber here recording his girlfriend having a seizure. Who does that? Now, of course, Greg eventually came out and said that this was all scripted, that it was all a parody, that it was all fake, that she didn't have a seizure. However, Shiloh says differently, that it was real from all the stress and the trauma that she endured. And as somebody who has witnessed seizures, IRL, I don't believe this was ever fake, but Onision tried to disguise it as that, in order to devoid any sort of criticism thrown his way towards doing something so deplorable as exploiting somebody's actual mental well-being and taking advantage of that vulnerability, confidentiality, and that privacy and blasting it on the internet as some sort of soap opera. You know, my dad's had two strokes, and when my dad had his first stroke, it never occurred to me for a split second that, oh my goodness, I want to get a camera and record my father. You know, when it comes to health-related issues, I'm really, really sensitive, and it gets my blood boiling. So I want you to come away with this understanding that this is not only abusive, but it's something only a sociopath or someone who's a psychopath would actually do. Filming someone at a, such a vulnerable mental state in order to exploit that on YouTube. This is a level of Jake Paul, oh my gosh, we're in that forest, I see somebody passed on the ground, let me get a camera and record. Who in their right mind thinks like this unless you're completely devoid of emotion, morals, and ethics? If you care about and love somebody, your first thought should be getting them help and not exploiting them when they're having a stress-induced seizure, which you can- you can die from having a seizure. That's how serious this is. Now Shiloh links in my DMs a bunch of timelines that support the fact that she was underage at the time. There's videos on his channel that confirm this, and again, that she was underage, and that Onision the Little Weasel tries to weasel him his way around all these relationships. If you notice this trend, he weasels his way around these relationships, right? And he tries to do everything just to get by legally, right on the line of what's considered legal. And I know all of you guys can agree that it's creepy, creepy, and weird, but this is where segment four comes in. His husband, or at the time, wife, Lainey Bot, who now goes by the name of Kai and has transitioned into a man. They, them, he, she, him, her. Doesn't really matter to me, but I'm gonna showcase a segment here from the channel Repzilla. No, it's not in association with me, in order to speed this video up because it's already getting way too long. Kai's current channel is Cool Guy Kai with over 342,000 subscribers. It wasn't always this, it did used to be Laney Bot, but the reason for the change is that Kai no longer identified as a female. So for the remainder of this video, we will be using male defining pronouns. Actually, an obsessed fan before he ended up marrying Onision. He actually found him through a Shane Dawson video. The video of them kissing, it's a, it's a whole story. Here's an older screenshot of Kai actually answering some questions. How long before you started talking to Greg did you watch his videos? Greg is an Eseon. Five to six months, probably. I feel like since you kind of married your celebrity crush just by being a fan, you give some of the other fangirls hope. No, I don't think you understand. I was a fangirl. Not as creepy as most, but creepy nonetheless. He would stalk Onision's Twitter looking for any opportunity as a way in. He would finally get his chance when Onision broke it off with then fiance Shiloh tweeting, Soulmate, where are you? You can see Onision's tweet, Soulmate, where are you? And then the reply, Tay it says Taylor. Taylor uh, it was actually the pre transition name for Laney, and then again now Kai. They said here. And then Anision goes straight to DMing Kai, saying, You really think you're my soulmate? If so, what makes you feel this way? Uh, shortly after they had a little bit of conversation in the DM, Anision actually proposed to Kai in a Skype call without ever having met him. Now, it is very important to note that Kai's father actually didn't approve of the relationship for the reason being it was potentially illegal. This conversation shows uh, then uh, Lainey Eleni is Kai. I've tried. My dad doesn't give a crap about the way I feel. Why don't you just go back with him? Like to Greg's place. My parents would never let me go. I want that more than anything. I have to wait until I'm back with him, which will either be August or October. We'll find out tomorrow. Oh wow, why that long? Does he not Skype with you when you're apart? Because that's when I begin college and he's calling a lawyer tomorrow just to triple check that everything is legal. And if not, he'll come back when I'm 18. Now, this is really important because it literally mirrors a situation with an earlier relationship. You might recall with Shiloh. Uh, 
On September 11th of 2019, Shiloh on Twitter, goes by Patient Zero, actually tweeted saying, Do you remember checking the state laws before coming to PA? A few days after telling me you were leaving Sky for me, just to make sure you could have relations with a 17 year old. 16 was the consenting age. The reason I wanted to talk about the beginning of their relationship and how they met and the, just the general mechanics of that was to show you the length and the things that Kai would be willing to do in order to be with Anision. I think it's really important and pertaining to this topic. In the summer of 2016, a young girl named Billy came into the picture where there was an on again, off again, polyamorous relationship between the three. This was originally supposed to be a relationship between Billy and Kai as Kai reached out to Billy on Twitter. Now at the time, Billy was 18 years old, just turned 18 years old. Kai was 21 and Anision was 30 years old. It was kind of later revealed that it was Anision that was pushing Kai into pursuing the relationship with Billy. Uh, that's kind of weird. Again, Lane is Kai on Twitter. It was his idea. I was open to it, but he kept pushing me to date Billy when I really didn't want to. And then to make things worse, he later revealed that, well, the reason that Anision was pushing him into this relationship was because Anision would get something out of it and get something out of it, he did. I will be dedicating an entire video to Kai in the future because Kai is on the same level as Onision with preying on people who are minors and there is so much evidence of this. But this video is really focusing on Onision and the fact that he tried to push a polyamorous relationship by bringing in a third and pushing it on his, at the time, wife in order to get something out of. I hope you're happy. You completely like destroyed all of my pride. You told me to get a tattoo saying I'm a liar, like a tramp stamp. You told me to shave my head. You told me to dye my hair green, shave off my eyebrows, and get an ugly tan. Like, is that not abusive to you? The fact that you put such private information online for everyone to see, that was so confidential. I've told five people. Five! And you told all of the internet because you're a salt. It was later revealed on Billy's Twitter is that what Onision said and did was he released very, very private details in regards to Billy having an abortion when she was 16. Now, I just want to make it really clear to everybody watching this video is that there is nothing wrong with having an abortion, specifically when you're that young. It's a very personal, private issue that needs to be private, but Gregory doesn't think like that. He will use any sort of personal story or personal experience that you've had, and he will blast that to the internet in hopes to harm you, to make you feel vulnerable, and in order to make you feel worthless. This is behavior of an abusive person. You don't take something so personal and blast it out to the internet in hopes that uh, it will hurt them. You just don't do that, especially with people that you're rom involved with romantically. That's not love, that's not care, and that's what somebody who is truly vindictive, manipulative, and abusive does. No! Like, that's not how this should work. Like, you don't feel bad at all. That's the worst part. Like, you're just a person who likes to destroy people's lives because they're salty. That's it. You're the worst human being I have ever experienced. And if you know anything about Greg, he doesn't... Greg doesn't do things. This is, a, this is another behavioral thing. Greg doesn't do things out of the kindness of his heart or because he thinks it's a good idea. He only does things with... A, with a desire to get something out of it. That's all. the only reason he does anything nice or moral at all. But then can you really call it nice or moral if he's only doing it to get something out of somebody or to gain favor points? And what I mean by this is most recently, and I have to mention this, is that about a month and a half ago, Onision emailed me with some pretty vile, disgusting stuff of somebody trying to release a photo of my deceased relative. This individual that I knew IRL sent this to Onision in attempts to try to hurt me, which succeeded, but it also in hopes that Onision would somehow use my past grandpa as a means to attack me, or the fact that almost a month and a half ago, I voiced that I needed privately to seek some help because I was very close to relapsing in regards to self-harm. They sent this Onision with one intent, in hopes that he would somehow try to use that against me. But Onision emailed me and said, hey, you know what, this is really screwed up. I'm gonna forward you everything that they sent me because that is what I would want somebody to do if they were someone who was trying to exploit my mental health related issues. And I said to Greg, hey, you know what, I appreciate that. I can acknowledge you did something nice to me. But again, Greg doesn't do things just because he wants to be nice. He did this simply because he hoped that I wouldn't cover 
all the things that have been coming out about him in the last month. So essentially, he did a nice thing and tried to blackmail me, just keep me silent, wouldn't talk about him in the future. Now, I did say in an email that, hey, I appreciate what you did, I'm not going to ignore it, but that does not mean that I'm not going to not make videos about you in the future, and his response was, Okay. And then just in the last week and a half, I have been getting DMs by these random accounts, as you can see here, and I'm gonna read them out, but this is the same name on one of his web forums that he is administrator of. Now, obviously, I can't prove without a shadow of a doubt that this is him, but if you look at these things that he's that I've been being sent, not only does he not deny that it's him, he speaks and talks in the exact same manner that Gregory himself speaks in his videos and on Twitter and his social media. So I believe that this is him. It's the same username on his web form that he is an administrator of, and he's messaging me with these different sock accounts sliding into my DMs trying to argue against me. If you notice the things that he's saying, it's like, I did something to help you, so why are you talking about me? and the crappy things that I've done. I did something to help you, Daniel. I sent something that I would want somebody to send to me. Because your act wasn't authentic or genuine, my dude. You see, Gregory, if somebody sent me a photo of your deceased mom or your dad or no anyone in your family for that matter, I would never post it online. I would privately send you a message and say, hey, this is really screwed up. I just want you to know this is happening. And I would expect nothing in return. If you wanted to badmouth me, go ahead and badmouth me. I don't really care. The fact of the matter is I'm sending you something that's important and I don't expect anything in return. That's what people should do, because the moment you expect something in return, you're not really doing it for genuine, authentic reasons now, are you, Greg? You really think you're gonna blackmail me into silence? That will never, ever, 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 ever happen. Now that that's out of the way, let's focus on, very shortly, the whole Billy saga, and this third party that Greg was trying to force his wife at the time into a polyamorous rel I can't speak today. Polyamorous relationship in order to get something out of it. And getting something out of it, he definitely did. There was some intimate touching, some massaging, some booty rubs, when apparently Lainey at the time was very uncomfortable with this ever happening or physical touching ever happening. It did happen when she was out of town or gone. I don't even know the specifics. It doesn't really even matter at that point. The point is Greg got something out of it physically, having this third party in the relationship and then whoop de doo out they went. He got what he wanted, kicked out, and walla walla, here you go. I also covered this video when the video was titled Onision Wants You in His Basement is linked down below in the description. All Everything that I'm, for the most part, talking about is linked down below in the description. I know it's getting annoying saying that, but please, it's linked down below in the description. Once she's kicked to the curb, only about a year and a half, two years later, a fourth party gets involved. And she goes by the name of Sarah. You guys have this concept of grooming, right? But that requires you have s with somebody right after they turn 18. I said that something has happened with her, or I cuddled in bed with her that none of that has ever happened. Never. Like, go to sleep. Good night. We first started tweeting Onision and Onision's at the time wife, Lainey. Um, I was, well, when I started tweeting them, I was 13. So you were a fan of them. Like that was the relationship with you being a fan of them. I was like the biggest fan. <laughs> Okay, so clearly already there's like a power dynamic there, right? Like it's, you know, someone, they're adults, they're internet famous, you are a fan, and you're a minor. So already power dynamic established. Yeah, so uh, he, we were tweeting back and forth, and then he DM'd me, hey, how old are you? And I said, uh, hey, Lainey, I'm 14. And he said, oh, you look older. Uh, he sent me a message that said, I'm about to delete this app, here's my phone number, and he gave me his phone number. We would, you know, make jokes about us being together, but he also, he would send me, like, pictures of, of like, him without a top on. Basically, Kai was taking selfies, and he sent me a few of the selfies, and one of them, he didn't have any bottoms on, but he had a shirt on, and one of them, like, his entire, like, private was in the picture. So... We had been friends since I was 14. Um, I was going through a lot, and we had joked about me living there, but one night uh, after some really not-so-great stuff went down, I was outside crying, uh, texting my best friend, Kai, and he said that he was seriously going to talk to Greg about me living there. And I was, at first I was just shocked. Like I sat there like, 
what? What do you mean? And I was like, wait, really? And he was like, yeah, it hurts to say this, but I do feel, I feel like they knew what they were doing. Yeah. I would, I would, I think anyone watching this, sorry, I think anyone watching this definitely probably feels the same that there's really no reason to move a teenager in with you or to send the kind of messages they sent and then conveniently, coincidentally, be entered with you after you turn 18. And I mean, we had already had romantic conversations and talks um, when I was 15. And I know that in the video that he posted online, uh, I basically was like, oh, nothing is going on, guys. Um, but he wanted me to make that video and he like really pressured me into making it and I really didn't want to. Um, I have bloopers from it of me literally like having like a mental breakdown, like sobbing because I was just so overwhelmed. Oh my God. It's only like 40 seconds long because he literally gave me like a list of things to say and I just said them and I just like, like, like bullet points didn't like tell me exactly what to say, but like bullet points of what to like speak about. So I just spoke about whatever he wanted me to. And then I just like stopped it. I didn't want to do it. Jeez, that's so controlling, right? Like to have this adult move you in and then force you to go on camera and explain how nothing inappropriate is going on. That just seems really messed up. Well, and also what would hurt me a lot is like having to watch him say like, oh, we don't even hug Sarah, we don't even do this or that. And it's like, I'm I'm sitting there like 16 watching this and I'm just like, but yes, you do. Like you're, you're sitting here and you're blatantly lying and I can't say anything because I don't want to get you in trouble. Tell me a little bit about the NDA that you signed. You told me um, off camera that you signed an NDA the morning after you were intimate with them for the first time. Yeah. He and Kai decided that everyone in their life needed to sign an NDA and that I was no exception to that. The Greg and Kai had their eyes on Sarah from a very, very long time. This is where the screwed up stuff that I can't even believe happened has happened. And it's one of the most, this is horrible, is one of those things that makes your blood boil so much because again, it's another victim. It's another person who's been hurt. It's another person who gets kicked out instantly when they get what they want, and that person is left alone, feeling used, abused, and worthless. Sarah was having some personal family-related issues. Greg and Kai jumped on the opportunity to invite her to live with them in their home at the age of 16. There was quite a lot of evidence. Kai at the time says some statements that there's nothing going on between Sarah, Kai, or Greg. But if there's one thing that we know about Gregory and his husband is that they seem at this point to be pathological liars about every little detail in their lives. She says they've never touched, they've never hugged, they've never done any of these things, yet videos say otherwise, photos say otherwise, and Sarah has been coming forward with a lot of info about what went behind the scenes when they obtained legal guardianship over Sarah when she was a minor. Now what's absolutely terrible about this situation is that Kai and Greg both discussed Sarah's virginity like it was a piece of meat, like it was some sort of trophy to brag about. And it's quite frankly unbelievable at this point at how both perverted these two individuals, Kai and Onision Gregory, really are. Right when Sarah became 18, Onision took her not only her virginity and after the fact forced her to sign a bogus NDA contract in order to keep her silent and in fear. Neutral non-disclosure agreement. Now I'm not going to go through all of the specifics in this, but essentially this is a copy and paste. He did not write this. He just took it off of Google, copied and pasted it on a piece of paper and said, hey, you know what? I'm forcing you to sign this. I'm not gonna get it A, notarized as a legal document, but two, I'm forcing you to sign this because I wanna keep our relationship so hidden that nobody knows about it. He forced Sarah to make a YouTube video saying that nothing was ongoing, nothing was going on between Kai, nothing was going on between Gregory. I want you to understand this really, really clearly. They obtained legal guardianship of Sarah and discussed wanting to take her virginity the moment she turned 18 years of age. And when she did, they did exactly that. And then as soon as they got what they both wanted, they kicked her to the curb. Do you see a pattern? Do you see behavioral patterns here with Gregory and also including his husband? I mean, I surely do. If you really love and care somebody, why would you want to keep that relationship silent? Even Sarah admits here 
that I didn't even want to, to collaborate or do videos around with Billy or any of o Onision's friends at the time because they were afraid that these people would start asking questions. And well, Onision's greatest threat is asking questions of living with a 16-year-old and obtaining parental guardianship over a 16-year-old only to groom them and steal their virginity as soon as she turns 18 and kick them out. Sarah's Twitter is also linked down below. This is one of those situations that infuriates me. How many more young people need to be hurt and damaged and used by Gregory before people realize that this man is in fact a predator? He preys upon young, vulnerable, impressionable fans of his, takes advantage of them, gets what he wants off of them, and then he projects every problem that he has caused on that individual back at them. So what do I mean by this exactly? Well, apparently, according to Greg and Kai, Sarah, a uh, small little Sarah who just turned 18, apparently R-A-P-E-D, Kai and Greg. What? Yeah, I, I, I said that right. Apparently that's what she did. She is, she is such a, she is a she-hulk of a woman, Sarah is. She's able to subdue Kai with one hand, Greg with the other, and just R-A-P-E to town. Let's say I'm a cop and you were R. I can only do my job if you tell me what happened. You refused. You are now a R shield. What I've learned today, R's get away with their crimes in part due to people who are too cowardly to report them to the police. Your husband responds, guess I'm to blame. Your response, I blame everyone who's ever been violated, not just on the violators, but those who keep their crimes a secret. You earned that. This is one of his mind games. Anytime someone that he's been involved with romantically or physically, he flip everything that they say about Greg right back and he claims that he is the victim. Greg is always the victim of every circumstance, of every individual, of every person he's ever been involved in. But Greg, we know that that isn't true anymore. There's so much condemning evidence of you, husbands, grooming, of people who are underage, that at this point, it is so undeniable that you choose to make parody videos making fun of any victims that say anything about you negatively in your weird, screwed-up, satirical mind of videos of parodies. Your videos are vile in nature. There's a trend of always making videos about beating women, hurting women, saying horrible, degrading things about women, telling women that if they get abused, it's always somehow their fault, and they're as bad as an abuser if they don't instantly report it right when you think that it's appropriate completely devoiding any sort of trauma or stress that people go through when they are abused. I am sick and tired of this crap and you continuing to walk around and avoid any sort of accountability for the things that you do, the people that you hurt, but the young women that you lure in to use and abuse for your own satisfaction. And if there's one thing I think this video does, Greg, it displays that perfectly, that you are not the person that you've been spewing for the last eight years on this platform, always trying to appear the victim, always projecting every little issue that you struggle with onto other people, and breaking them down so low that you cause them to have mental breakdowns. There isn't just one, there isn't just two, there isn't just three, there isn't just four. There's actually more than just this. But these are some of the biggest mental breakdowns that he's caused people to have. And Greg sees nothing wrong with what he does. And I hope this video wakes anyone up who is still a fan of his to acknowledge and realize that this man is not only abuser, but he preys upon young people. And he does everything so thin close to the legal line that he gets away with it. And I hope that this video helps anyone who's thinking about getting involved with him, whether it be with videos, whether it be giving him money, or sliding in his DMs in hopes to garner some attention, don't do it. He will exploit you, he will use you, and he will abuse you to such a low point that you will have no self-esteem and no self-worth, and that's what he wants. I'd like this to stop. I think all of you watching this video wants it to stop too. Thank you for watching this video. All of my links and my socials are linked down below. The description is filled with screenshots, videos, photos of nearly everything that I've mentioned here in this video. If by some rare chance this video is monetized, which it most likely won't be, but if it is, I'll be donating 20% of any ad revenue that I make to a charity that helps women with domestic abuse. Please share this video, please tweet this video, but most of all, bring awareness to the type of person Gregory really is and why he needs to be stopped so that more and more people get hurt.